zero basis perch. And uh, why do we do this to ourselves? I, and, and by this, I mean, we, we, we choose to enjoy things for our hobbies, whether those be movies or comics or sports or whatever it happens to be, whatever you're interested in. Comic books was a tough one. And maybe this is my age talking um, that I grew up uh, certainly when, in, in a time period where you almost had to fight your teachers and your parents for comics. Now, I was very fortunate. As I mentioned in the past, my parents were always supportive of comics. My father, who was an educator, uh, was uh, unique in that when he saw comics, his first and immediate thought was, hey, this is, is going to get kids to become interested in reading and vocabulary and sequential art and storytelling much better than these textbooks will. This is, um, this is going to be a much more effective way to get this stuff embedded in kids' heads. And so he was always supportive of comics. But, I mean, I, I, it's funny. I have these memories. And uh, one of these days I'll have to inter interview my father, which would be weird. Uh, but uh, he had fights with the school board and with other teachers because he would buy comics and he would get them into the library. Because he, he believed, look, if kids are going to struggle reading Let's give them comics. This will trick them into reading, basically, and it will get them kind of excited about that. And it's a gateway to get them to, to learn and read. And he was very much in support of that. But, man, there, I, I still remember there were teachers who fought him, who took it to the teachers' union. Um, it, it, it is interesting. So I've grown up. I've, um, uh, I've, I've, I've come to more. The, the union is not all bad. It's not all good. Um, and, but when I was a kid, I remember, you know, witnessing firsthand my father's fights against the teachers union who were trying to, you know, literally it was an issue keeping comic books out of the libraries and the classrooms. And today, a lot of comic creators are very pro union. I see, uh, you know, lots of people, Jerry Conway on talking about the union, the values of the union. It's like, um, that's cool. But, you know, I, I just remember vividly these fights to, rid you know the comics couldn't come in for coming from the union so it's it, it sorry i got off on a tangent there um but comics were something i grew up with obviously it's become a, a part of my life i i it's it's very strange because if you ask me when i was like a teenager in high school i was like i'll do some I, I was getting into comics i was doing plenty of comics uh collecting them but at the time it was a thing that was uh, uh not shameful but you didn't put your your kind of geek interests out you didn't put your comic interests out it was still a you know sub uh hobby sub category to you know more worthwhile you know whether it was uh, exercise or sports or whatever it happened to be those things were all legitimate and comic books were the nerdy geeky thing and that was what it was like if you're growing up certainly in the in the 80s and uh if you're you're going through kind of high school in the 80s and 90s uh, that was what you got. And so today, that's not the case. Comic books are more mainstream. They're definitely, you know, it's it's graphic novels. It's, 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 it's more legitimate. So people don't have that same struggle. And I kind of wonder if that's a little bit of what's changed in the last 10 years. You know, I, I've done lots of videos and talked about kind of how social media is driving things. But another factor just might be kind of this passage of time and how the, you know, the hobby, the industry, the, the enjoyment has been different. Uh, when you were, you know, if you were in the 80s or the, the 90s and you were into comics, um, if, you, if you liked, if, if people who disagreed about comics, you know, Marvel fans versus DC fans or... Uh, people who liked more the independent stuff versus more the mainstream stuff. And in this case, mainstream would be like stuff like the X-Men. That was the big mainstream. And then, you know, Image had, you know, the Youngblood and Wild Clats, Cats and Spawn and stuff like that. And that was kind of the like the big mainstream. And then the independent stuff, those fans would be the Vertigo fans, the uh, Cerebus, the uh, Zot, you know, that kind of crowd that liked those comics. And, the, you know, the, the two sides would spar with each other. You know, the person who loved, you know, the X-Men 
would certainly, uh, you know, the, the people who are, who are in love with like uh, Shade, the Changing Man, or Sandman would argue with the X-Men fans. But it wasn't this like super aggressive kind of annihilation type battle. It was, uh, we were still all part of the same clan. Even if you liked Marvel, you know, a person who loves Marvel and a person who loves DC, they could argue very fiercely in the comic shop. But it wouldn't be a blood sport kind of argument. It would be a, a argument over kind of what you liked better, what was the best comic, everything else. But there was this underlying agreement that comics were cool, that comics were, were valuable and useful, and we liked comics. Everybody liked comics. And so the actual specific comic that you liked may differ, but, you know, the, the medium itself, you know, we could all align around that. Every now and then, um, you'd hit a situation where people are like, oh, comics are for nerds, like you'd, you run into in school, and you'd see the Marvel fan and the DC fan, you know, join forces shoulder to shoulder to defend, you know, like, no, no comics are cool, we like them. You'd, you'd see these these rivalries that exist inside the comic shop disappear in, in defense of comics. Today, it's, uh, it's, it, we've lost that to some extent. Um, if, you know, it, there is this, um, you know, there, there's suddenly all this segmentation. You, if you like comics back in the eighties and the nineties, if you're a fan of John Byrne, She-Hulk, you can know, like in today's culture, uh, particularly online, to be fair, this stuff doesn't play out in the comic shops anywhere close to the same that it plays out online. And I'm very anxious for the pandemic to be all done, for my shop to be open again, to start having these conversations with people, and to have this kind of better dialogue, because uh, that was it was it was healthier in the shop, where you'd get a Mariko Tamaki Hulk uh, fan and a John Byrne Hulk fan, and they could argue about why one is you know better or worse than the other, but it's still it, it was not the ugly ugly fight that you see on on say Facebook. Or Twitter, um, you 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 don't have that kind of you know real life intensity, or sorry the the online intensity in real life. And so I ask at the beginning, why do we do this to each other? Um, it's it's strange uh, why we do this. I mean, some of it's for attention. There's all those kind of aspects of social media, but like when I go on to uh, I go on to Twitter and I see somebody posting something along the lines of uh, you know. Um, you know, a, a, a reporter, a reporter, a journalist, a article writer, a somebody who's not really getting paid anything for IGN, IGN being one of the more major kind of game sites, starts posting things like, when you see a flag of Japan, I see pedophilia, racism, sexism, exploitation of children, stop supporting anime and Japanese games, boycott Japan. And this person is trying to get this going as a uh, as a as a thing. I, I look at this and I'm like, there's no way to see this and not think you are a. Uh, it, th that's true racism. What this kind of this kind of fighting is is true kind of ugliness. This stuff that I see the crop up from time to time around the more extreme fandoms, which which tend to be the X Men fandom the Poison Ivy fandom, uh, like a handful of, of the different groups, some of the independent comics fandom, it's no longer, people are no longer content to just still share a love of comics, but disagree on which comics are best. Instead, it's like, we must destroy this thing we don't like. Um, in the 80s and 90s, manga, which was not anywhere, anywhere remotely close to the popularity and attention span that it is today, um, that stuff was still all part of the club. If you love the X-Men or you love Sandman or you love, you know, whatever, Doom Patrol, um, you still appreciated that over in Japan, they were making comics over in Europe. They were making comics. Everybody has started the same club. You didn't see this kind of stuff from the, the fans, the customers or the creators. Um, I, I, you know, I, it's funny, the things that disappoint me about people, um, I see a lot of attention, a lot of videos being made about kind of this creator, that creator, blocking fans, all that kind of stuff. I don't think that's good. 
But in my book, that is not as significant as say like like Jerry Conway talking about how uh, sexism, exi- you know, the the Japanese anime stuff is filled with sexist behavior and needs to be censored. But that's that's beyond offensive for a guy who who you know has created the Punisher and or you know worked on on books like Punisher and, and Miss Marvel and Power Girl. Like it, it's it's bizarre to see us doing this to ourselves where, you know, I, I think comics have certainly gotten more popular and they're helpful, but we're, we're about to go through a bunch of changes, the whole print versus digital kind of how we're going to survive these, uh, you know, what's going to happen when these movies are not as popular as they are today. And comic books uh, has a drop in kind of this built in popularity. What happens then? What happens when comic books is transported back into that subculture geek kind of community. Are we going to be strong enough to survive that transition? I'd like to think so. And I'm sure the medium will survive, but I don't think that comic books is so bulletproof that we're okay with, you know, boycott Japan or these kinds of uh, all, you know, manga is sexist and offensive kind of blanket statements that, you know, not just customers, but comic creators. I mean, if a reporter from IGN is saying boycott Japan and, and all this kind of stuff, and if a, a legendary, and, and Jerry Conway is a legendary comic creator, no doubt about it. I mean, much respect. The guy has done a ton of things. It's not helpful to crap on our bigger industry like this. It's, it's, it is not it's not useful. And I know there's some people listening right now who are colleagues of Conway and are friends. And I, I apologize if I'm, I'm not trying to beat up on the guy, but it, we're, we're not at a place as a industry, as a hobby, as a medium, as an artistic expression of whatever you want to call it. We're not at a place where we can start just randomly uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, we need to be. We need to actually take a lesson from how we were in the '80s and '90s, where we were more. <laughs> it's funny to say it this way. We were more inclusive. We were more tolerant of differing ideas. We didn't hate each other because you know we we happen to like one comic over another, or we whatever the region is, whatever problematic or or strange thing is happening. We weren't constantly shooting each other over it. Um, why do we do this to ourselves? Whether you like Spawn or you like uh, Ms. Marvel or you like Batman or you like Alan Scott in his new uh, gay rendition for 2021 is this new origin he's got. Whatever version of whatever character you like, we are all brothers and sisters in the sense that we all like comics. I, I hope so. My, my disgust and my frustration with the battle between kind of the different online factions and different groups is that we're not big enough and strong enough to segment ourselves out this way. We need to all start figuring out how to get along and how to work together and how to help this industry survive and help this industry, you know, well, not just survive, but grow. It, it is, it is childish and stupid to uh, start dividing ourselves up this way. It's it's dangerous, and it's it's dumb. It, we are defeating ourselves. Uh, we are not we are not big enough to start carving up the world and start attacking each other within our own fandom. And uh, there's, there's no reason for us to do that. So why are we doing this to ourselves? I, I think that whether you're a customer or better yet, if you're a creator who has a voice, you need to start finding ways to build bridges as offensive as that may sound. Because I've, I've mentioned this and creators have written me saying, I am not going to build a bridge to a Trump supporter who uh, encourages bigotry. Or I am not going to build a bridge to some SJW who's trying to tell me how to behave. Sounds nice. 
we can't afford it. We cannot afford that kind of uh, you know division. The industry is not big enough. It's not stable enough. And we need to do more things to figure out how we come together, not split apart. I, I, I don't think we have a choice here. And it's foolish to act any other way. Thanks for listening.